Okay, so today we're doing 9-4. Um, the objective is to identify the type of symmetry in a figure. And we're talking about rotational stuff, uh, line symmetry, rotational symmetry, plane symmetry, and we're going to discuss those, okay? And if you got questions, ask them. <clears throat> if you don't have questions, great. But I don't find today incredibly nasty, horrible. And none of the days that we've done, this is third hour, right? <sighs> Sorry, I'm just a little off today with that homeroom that's kind of blew me away. I was just going to put in the fourth hour thing. Um, one of the things, you've just got to make sure you ask questions. This is all property stuff. Everything we've done is properties. Properties of translations, okay, transformations, properties of reflections, properties of rotations. Now we're just talking about things that rotate and spin around, okay? Some people like this stuff. Some people are like, ah, oh, it's all this properties. Just reread your notes daily. You'll pick it up. Use them, ask questions on stuff you're not getting in your assignment, you'll be golden. But if you're not doing that, it doesn't matter who's in front of you talking. Make sure you're getting her done, okay? It's all about you, not me, okay? So today we're looking at um, identifying the type of symmetry in a figure, okay? Um, initially, I had set this up for you guys to take notes on, yourself, on your own out of your textbook, but I'll just do it right now with you. Now, key concept, types of symmetry. A figure has line symmetry or reflectional symmetry if there's a reflection uh, for which the figure is its own image, okay? So what I'm saying is, if I take this, this part of the figure, if when I fold, goes over and is on top of that part of the figure, okay? And you guys can visually see that. I want you to think about if I took a really, really, uh, soaking wet marker and put it over there and I fold it in and an imprint it be like a tattoo on the other side of the page right okay that's the type of thing we're looking at now a figure has rotational symmetry if there's a rotation of 180 degrees or less now notice 180 degrees or less I don't worry about um, rotations beyond 180 remember multiples of the rotations will just go up to 180 it may or may not include 180 but when I'm asking for the multiples of rotations or what, what rotations are, are there in the figure, you'll just do multiples as well. Um, the angle of rotation for uh, rotational symmetry is the smallest angle needed for the figure to rotate onto itself. Okay, and really what it is, we learned it yesterday. If this is the center, the number of sides goes into 360, okay? And that's going to be our angle of rotation. It's also our exterior angle value, our central angle. That's It's the central angle that we're working with. And when I'm talking about polygons, it has to be a regular polygon to make this work. If it's not regular, it, it's, it doesn't matter how many things I divide by. It ain't going to come back to itself. Okay, So they have to come back to themselves. Okay, just checking to make sure I don't have anything else there. Okay, sliding on. A figure with 180 degree rotational symmetry also has something called point symmetry. Each segment joining a point in its 180 rotational image passes through the center of the rotation. Okay, now here's the thing. Point symmetry is a setup for you guys for next year. Okay, we're talking about origin symmetry, point symmetry, and it's really referring to what can happen with functions. And you're like, really? We're going to be flipping functions? Yep. Okay, one of the things is odd functions, like the sine curve, okay, or an odd function such as um, your cubic function, okay. When you have this part of the graph here, this can rotate, excuse me, wrong wrong part of the graph. I want to ro rotate that other little piece. Thank you. Okay, this can rotate back to itself if I did it really well. It can rotate back to itself amongst the origin there. So ideally, if I made a really nice graph, it should go out like that. It would rotate through. That's point symmetry, okay? That's where point symmetry is, 180 degree rotation exactly. What you guys know it as is like, well, that's the dumbest symmetry ever, Bloom. We don't do anything like that. You've got to know that if you can get to multiples of 180 with your rotations, your simplest rotation, that it also has point symmetry, and you've got to add that into your memory bank, okay? Remember, kind of save that. It's for next year. 
and you'll go, oh yeah, Bloom talked about odd functions, okay? Because that's one of the things you'll totally remember from my class. Okay, now a square, which has both 90 and 180 rotational symmetry, also has point symmetry because it has that 180. If we can get to 180, totally golden. But a pentagon, let's talk about that real quick so you guys are aware of the difference. If I have a pentagon, and let's assume it's perfect in every way, okay? This is me 360 divided by 5. And that's 72 degrees. So the rotational 70, symmetry is 72, 144. And my next addition of 72 goes beyond 180, doesn't include 180. So I talk about it has a rotational symmetry of 72 degrees, but also 144 degrees because it'll come back to itself. And whether I do that counterclockwise or clockwise, it co it's covered, okay? Now, how many lines of symmetry does a regular hexagon have? When you're looking at any regular figure and people are like, what are lines of symmetry, Bloom? So I've got a line of symmetry coming through here. Okay, that's lines of symmetry. I got one right there. But is that the only one in this figure? I mean, if you really look at this thing, I got a couple other sides here. So I really got this. I've got this. So that's three. Oh, is that it? And now I got some creative geniuses out there going, no, it's not it, Bloom. I also got diagonals. The diagonals could be lines of symmetry as well. And people, was that it? Well, well, yeah, that's it. But now there is a rule for regular polygons. Notice how I said that, regular. Interior angles are the same, sides are the same. For regular polygons, for regular hexagons, in this case, there are just as many lines of symmetry as sides, but that extends to, for regular polygons, not just hexagons, for regular polygons, there are just as many lines of symmetry as there are sides. So if I say, hey, you know, how many lines of symmetry does a thousand-sided figure have? You don't have to sketch it out. You can just say a thousand. Okay, how many lines of symmetry to a, does a dodecagon have, which is a 12-sided figure? And you're going to be saying, well, it's 12 below Okay, now, here's a little extra little anecdote. Even numbered figures, even regular figures will have point symmetry, guaranteed. The only odd figure I can think of right now that has point symmetry is a triangle. No, it won't have tri point symmetry at all. Even sided figures, I'm gonna stay with that. Even sided figures will have point symmetry. Okay, because we'll be able to get back to 180 and all even numbered, numbered figures. Okay, now I want you to draw a rectangle that's not a square, which means it's got to be a little longer than a square. How many lines of symmetry does your rectangle have? Go, go ahead and make the drawing. Remember, the thing that requires something to be a rectangle has to have four right angles. That's it. So a square qualifies as a rectangle, but we're talking about um, symmetries in a rectangle, not symmetries in a square, because the symmetries in a square follow the same things in number one. It's a regular figure, so there'll just be four oops, lines of symmetry in a square. The two diagonals and the two different sides opposite each other. In a rectangle, however, I just have two. I should have two, maybe. Let's see what happened here. Properties. Nothing's working. Object animation, fade in, fade out. There we go. It's there. Two lines of symmetry. Okay. Does that make sense? I got my little picture. I got two lines, one down the middle, one across the middle. Okay, as I go. Any follow-up questions? Shoot. What about the diagonals? Let's talk about diagonals, because that's always the number one question that people come up with. If I fold this here, this one would go up here, and it wouldn't be on top of itself. Remember, these symmetry lines are on top of themselves. That's why I was so specific about making sure it wasn't a square, because a square it would work, totally work, right? Matter of fact, when you fold dog ear a page of paper to the other side, you can actually cut off the bottom and a square will be the result. Okay, you can make that quite quickly. 
But in this rectangle, we'll have some slop over. So that does not have a symmetry line that's on the diagonal. And that's all. It just, just doesn't come back to itself. Okay. Um, let's see. In a median of a triangle, a line of symmetry for the triangle, excuse me, in a median, is a median, <laughs> Bloom can't read, is a median of a triangle, a line of symmetry for the triangle. Okay, now you got to think about what a median is. A median is a segment that goes from the midpoint of a side opposite to its vertex. Okay, we did this in chapter five. But you got to remember that the median becomes perpendicular bisector and an angle bisector and altitude when we're working with an equilateral triangle. So when it's a, the triangle's a regular triangle, we can say sure, but they didn't say regular triangle in this question. So because of that, I can't believe I did that too, so we'll see how much I killed of that. Ooh, I killed the whole thing. Not always. Um, the median, In a regular triangle, oh, gee whiz. I'm going to go back with my original statement that I said earlier with you guys. I'm going to try to connect it this way. Not always. In a regular triangle, it will be. Since that would be equilateral. Okay, but in any other triangle, it's not a guarantee. Okay, in a regular triangle, it would be. It would be the the median would be the line of symmetry. In a regular triangle, it would be. Okay, make sure you're part of this. Okay, now. Answer two on your own. I want you to consider two. Does the figure have rotational symmetry? I'm not asking about line symmetry. I'm asking, does it have rotational symmetry? Which means, can I rotate it 180 degrees or less and have it come back to itself? In regular figures, remember regular polygons, all the sides are the same, all the interior angles are the same, the center of rotations in the, the center of the polygon, that sucker spins around to itself often. Okay, but in shapes that aren't, you have to visually think about it, okay? So when I'm looking at this, I'm trusting that you've already done that. I have people look down right away when I said it. That's 180 degrees. This is 180 degrees. It doesn't come back to itself, okay? So in this first figure, it's a no, okay? Matter of fact, I was rather wordy about it. So I would suggest that you read it and paraphrase that answer. <coughs> And while you guys are doing that, I am going to try to make the other one kind of a little bit more realistic to try to show that it does come back to itself. So here on this one, this thing, well, that looks kind of cool. So we go around. It comes back to itself each time. Matter of fact, you know, every time I rotate, but now people are going, well, how often you're rotating? This is a star that has five sided. One, two, three, four, five five-sided star. Well, that's just like a pentagon. So 360 divided by 5 is 72. So it'll have rotational symmetry of 72 and 144. So the star has rotational symmetry. Angle of rotation is 72. Multiples of that rotation are 72 and 144. Okay, so we just got to keep in mind that stuff as we're going through. And I'll after you're done with that, I forgot to answer 2A, B. I want you to finish doing that as I'm walking around checking people's stuff. Make sure you're part of the pro process, folks, because if you're not part of this, um, it's difficult for you to be forced to learn. And I know if you just want to dissociate yourself from it, it's really easy to do. But if you ain't part of it, you win. Congratulations. But just like a person who smokes every day and goes to the doctor, and, hey, how can I avoid cancer? And the doctor says, hey, don't smoke. You know, that's thing one. I mean, it may not avoid cancer, but it'll help. And you continue smoking and then you can contract cancer. It's not the doctor's fault. <laughs> he did what he could or she did what he could, she could. You've got to follow through. Make sure you're following through. I can do this so much. You've got to follow through.
Now, that's also the cool thing about life. You have an opportunity to make your own oopses and successes all at the same time. Now, in this next one, in 2A, does the figure below have rotational symmetry? Now, this rotational symmetry is yes, and I've got some people go, no way, Bloom, but it's right here. It comes back to itself every 180. That's 180, that's 180. And some people, what if you do it the other way? Nope, that's 180 as well. Okay, so you get pretty good at spinning stuff around the axis a little bit for yourself. Some people say, oh, I'm not very good at this, but everybody can become better at this. Yes, Mr. Sykes. You've got to be careful. If I go 36 degrees on my star, I'm there. I'm not back on itself. 72 brings me back to itself. Okay, that's a good follow-up question. I appreciate those. So keep it, keep those coming. But remember, it's just like a, um, a hubcap, you know, we were spinning the tire on the car around. How often is the pattern repeated? The repetitiveness of a pattern that's in a circle Okay, and people, you get, I, it's real general to do circle because, you know, all polygons, you know, they have flat edges, but really can fit inside a circle if they're regular because that's called the circumscribing circle that goes around them, it goes through each vertex. So I can really generalize it down to a circle. That's why we have the center of a polygon, we have radiuses of a polygon that go from the center to the vertices of the polygon itself. Okay, so when we're talking about that, when we have that repetitive pattern, that's really the concern we're looking for. And that's how we can tell if it's going to generate a rotational symmetry back to itself. Okay. Does the figure have point symmetry? Now, point symmetry is a symmetry that's created from a rotation of 180 degrees exactly. So in this case, for number 2A, you know, our figure there, it is true. It has point symmetry. Yes, a figure with 180 degree rotational symmetry also has point symmetry. And remember, this was 2A and 2B. These two are connected. Okay, some people were like, well, you did 2A, B um, there, and I have two small A. I, I know, Bloom can't count. It's just his creative way of using two. Makes it look like we have less examples. Now, I want you to do a self-assessment real quick. On this next one, what type of symmetry can three-dimensional objects have? We've gone through them. Kinda. Think about it. Three-dimensional object. Think about throwing clay on a wheel and you put your hands on it, you start to mold it. What type of symmetry do we have there when the wheel's going around? Okay, if it's rotating, we have rotational symmetry. After I'm done, I should be able to take the wire with the hands and be able to slice right through that piece of clay that I rotated on the wheel, right? And I will have plane symmetry, okay? That's kind of a line symmetry for three-dimensional objects, okay? And I have axis symmetry because as I spin it, it doesn't matter how many degrees I go, right? It comes back to itself, which is really cool. I mean, if you think about a lamp, a lampshade that doesn't have any quirky little other things. It's really smooth on the outside. The, the shade could be all corrugated and stuff. It would come back to itself eventually a lot faster than most of our polygons. Okay, so um, various types, including reflectional symmetry in plane uh, and rotational symmetry about a line. Okay, so it's rotational axis symmetry. Now draw three dimensional, uh, uh, three dimensional objects different from the examples provided. I want you just to practice this. This is kind of fun. Um, so I want you to be aware of what's happening. How I do this, people are like, how do you get these done? You're so quick. They're not great, but they are pretty good. When I, all I do is draw a rectangle. And now I want to draw a similar rectangle, okay? Now, I'm gonna dot the parts of the rectangle that shouldn't come in contact with your site, okay? And then make the ones that do solid. And then after I do that, I connect them. I connect the ones with solid lines that you can kind of see, and the ones you can't, I dot. And that's what I got. Sometimes they're really great, sometimes they aren't, but that's the best, fastest way to do it, okay? You know, if you want to just really go quick. But 
it's not about me teaching you how to do a three-dimensional object. It's about you thinking about your samurai sword because you've got that three-dimensional object or your clay object now. This is the clay thing. You take your samurai sword and you're going to cut it straight across, okay? Right smack dab in the center where your cut splits it into two perfectly equal halves. Okay, it could be anywhere along here. Ooh, that was really pretty good. Okay, it could be anywhere along here. But you want to do it when I have plane symmetry in a three-dimensional object. I want it to be the mirror. If I slice it and I put a mirror in, you look down, you'd see the other side, and you wouldn't even tell that I moved it. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, I want you to realize the rotational symmetry in this next, next object. There's this uh, cylinder, and I do two circles. Okay, and again... Boy, that was really a bad circle. We're going to do that again. Um, I want to, the things that you can't see, I'm going to adjust that a little differently. I'm going to cheat a little bit. There we go. Um, are dotted. And then I can just connect them. And then I've got my cylinder. That's all I do. Okay. Now they're asking here rotational symmetry. The object can be rotated about a line so that the image matches the pre image. Well, that's cool. Okay. That's right there. This is my axis. I'm just going to spin it right there. Okay, kind of looks like a marshmallow ready to get roasted. Okay, and if you are versed in roasting marshmallows, it's like a spit. You just keep roasting it. If you're one of those people that shoves it in the fire and watches it burns, like, look, it's a torch. It's the Olympic flame. Okay, um, just make sure uh, Smokey the Bear isn't your friend. All right, so as we go through, we're just talking about symmetries. So what I want you to do is do a self-quiz on 3A and B, and again, I have another three. It's like I stutter type, okay? Actually, when you read this, there's a example that you read, and there's an example that you do, and they're connected. And you're supposed to read this, but I'm walking through it as a, a notes together, okay? So you guys go ahead and do the self-exam or example in problem 3A and B and the regular problem 3. Go ahead and answer them. Okay. Now, I've got reflectional symmetry in A, but it has to be my reflectional symmetry is through the top. Okay, Rotational symmetry all the way around. If I just let the base spin on a wheel, that's probably how it was constructed. Okay, um, My pitcher, I got some people going, boom, it's got a handle and a spout. It don't got that. If I cut from above, and I think about it, I just finished this in Husen's. Husen's looking at it going, Bloom, let's see how thin your walls are. And he takes that little wire cutter thing, you know, with the handles, and he slices straight down. He worked really hard. I put a handle on it and everything. But the spout and the handle split, if he cuts it straight down, that will be reflectional symmetry. So it does have one plane of reflection if I cut through the handle and the spout itself. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're doing it. we got to, like... Do some mental exercises on these when we're going through because they're not incredibly ha nasty hard, but they can be helpful to just think about. And this one has got both, okay, because it'll spin and it'll get, get its stuff done as we're going through. Now, if you're at home, you can click on the live link for 9.4. It's sitting there in your uh, page that we have. If you're here, <laughs> you're getting it right there. If you don't want to... You know, exercise your printer too much today. Just make sure that you know you got to pick up the assignment tomorrow.
that should do it. We're done. Have a great night.